the spring of your life, in the spring of your life, you kiss all the girls, but you don't take a wife. You're tall as a mountain and swift as a stream, and pay dirt is waiting if gold is your dream. In the summer of life, there's so much to be done, but always the search for a place in the sun. A time when a woman is life to a man, if love doesn't hold him, then nothing else can. It is autumn, the world of the yellowing leaf, of chance has gone by, and the hurt and the grief. It gnaws at your innards, for gone is your prime, and all you have left is a handful of time. It is winter as seen by the snow of your hair and dwindling moments that someone can share. Unless you come back and admit you are lost, how bleak the December, how bitter the frost. You have four seasons, four seasons to make your dreams come true. A man's lifetime has four seasons, that's all God gives to you. I just can't imagine what it was like when we got the news back home that gold was discovered in California. Folks near went crazy. They just picked up their belongings and headed west, thousands of them, young and old. By boat, wagon train, riding, walking, any way they could get to where the gold was. It wasn't easy like they said in the posters. There were rivers to cross, mountains to climb, and Indians. Some didn't make it. But most did, because they all had the same dream. Go. I'd like to tell you about a friend of mine, Tracy Powell. Him and me came out from Missouri when the rust was just beginning. We was young then, in our 20s. And we both had the fever. Bad. I thought there'd be more of a town, though. No eating places or nothing, not even any streets. But we made it, just like you said. 2,000 miles. If you want that gold, you can keep it, boy. Just get to the diggings. 
If you want them nuggets in your hand, it's all right with me. <laughs> Only worth a couple of cents. Can't take much out in one day. You'll find that out. I guess I didn't see where I was going, mister. Nobody around here sees where they're going, especially the first couple of days. You all right, Tracy? Yep, that's it. A river of gold. Sure, lots of folks down there. Tell me, uh, how long you figure it's gonna take before you get rich? Two weeks, maybe? <laughs> Three? Well, don't you do no digging, mister? No, I'm just sitting here. Much easier that way. You keep a sitting there, and all you'll end up with is calluses. <laughs> <laughs> maybe so, maybe so. Just look at them down there. Breaking their back. Just for feed. It's like them ants there. Thousands of them. All of them doing the same thing. Crawling up the hill, then down the hill, then up again. Can't never get anywhere that way. Don't you worry none, mister. We've been a long time coming. We aim to make it. What makes you think you're so different? Because we ain't no ants. Come on, Bert. We got some digging to do. You fellas need any equipment, or your dust changed a coin. Just remember the name's Haver. Willis Haver. Only got six more of these gold diamonds left, my friends. Absolutely sure far. All you gotta do is walk along, watch the little needle point, and there you are, wham, a mother loaf. Now, I know what you're thinking, my friends. You're thinking if this fellow's a dog gold smart, why don't he go out and find his own gold? Well, I would, but I got sore feet. Just think of it, my friends. No more scratching and digging for gold. This little gold diamond will find gold for you. It not only finds gold, but it cures rheumatism. Yes, sir, my friends. After you find a million dollars in gold, you ain't got no more rheumatism. Ah! I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not asking 200. I'm not asking 150. But for a small sum of money. Hey, take it easy, man. Took us all day to pan that dust. Took me all day to cook this grub. How about that, Tracy? Most of the whole day's work just to eat once. Howdy, Mr. Haver. Hey, you know what? A couple of men working down from us just a bit. Took out $80 today. I seen it. You know what? Instead of using pans, they got a box-like thing. They rock back and forth. Not bad, huh? Just like the poster says back home, go west, reach down, and pick it up. I'm sure glad you and I joined up, Tracy. Eighty dollars. The way I figure you and me could do that easy. And that sure beats working back in Missouri. There's some doing better than that. What are you aiming to do? Eighty dollars a day ain't nothing. There's ways a man can get real rich, Bert. How? That's what I'm aiming to find out. Howdy, Mr. Haver. Me and my partner's wondering if uh, you had one of them boxes you rock back and forth. We figure we can do better if we have one of them. Be it, kid. Your tent, mister? Yeah. What's your name, boy? Powell. Tracy Powell. Hmm. Tracy here ain't like the rest of them. He's gonna hit it big. <laughs> ain't that right, boy? How'd you do today? We took about uh, $80. You see that, Sam? Not many around here could do that the first day. Come on, Hamer. I gotta catch up on my drinking. Your gold, mister? Man must be a powerful man to take that much gold. Excuse me for asking, but you get that gold out of the river? You better get out of here, boy, before you get your nose caught someplace where it hadn't ought to be. I ain't aiming to get you mad, mister. Just asking a civil question. You don't have to answer it. 
Except in, uh, I know you didn't get that gold out of the river. Oh? Uh -huh. He knows you didn't get the gold out of the river. <laughs> you aren't a good judge of human character, Sam. Wilkins here a little moody when he ain't had a drink. Powell didn't mean nothing, did you, boy? He was just eager. Eager like a thin coyote. You know, I don't see it do no harm telling us where you work in the gold. Who knows, Sam? Powell here might make just the partner that you've been looking for. I didn't mean to ride you. I respect a man's got sense enough to make out better than the rest of us. How about me buying you a drink, Mr. Wilkins, and you and me can talk? That's a good idea, boy. Bar is the best place to work for a couple of fellas getting to know each other. You care to join us, Mr. Haver? I'll be along. I still got some arithmetic to do. You know, I was wrong about you, Mr. Haver. You keep setting, you're gonna get rich. <laughs> Maybe I was wrong about you, too. You better get out there before Sam drinks the bar dry. <laughs> I'm gonna get me a drink. Fella had all that gold's name Wilkins, Sam Wilkins. You never seen so much gold. I tell you, you gonna... don't drink. Maybe it's time I started. I got business to talk for both of us. Well, count me out. The fellow was showing me that rocker. Well, he says Wilkins is no good, and everybody knows that. So, well, just stay away from him, Tracy. We'll be all right once we get that box built. And end up like the rest of them around here? I tell you, I've seen that money. More money than I've ever seen in my life before. I'm gonna get some of it. Well, last fella went out with Wilkins, got himself killed. Now, you ain't that kind. I've known you since we was kids. We ain't kids no more. Oh, I still say you ain't that kind. Maybe not. But one thing's for sure. I didn't come all this way to break my back just to fill my belly. You in or out? Out. Trace. Watch your step. I'm a fixin' to. fools down by the river, scratching for a little dust. You just keep your eye on a Mexican. He'll show you where you can get a real hunks of gold right in these hills. I wasn't figuring on no claim jumping. Well, what's the matter? You want to come out of here with some gold, didn't you? You can't have a weak stomach and get rich. If you don't like it, boy, you can get out of here right now. Let's go to work. Man, now you're catching on. Out here, there ain't no rest except on Sundays. Because some of us are scared of the Lord, and the others have at least one day to do some real drinking. <laughs> well, Tracy began to find out what some men will do to get rich quick. I don't think Tracy was bad, even though he went along. Sometimes gold will do strange things to a man. 
Let me buy you a drink. No, thanks. Thanks, sir. How about you, Mr. Aver? After all, I got you to thank. Hadn't been for you, never would have met Sam. Never would have met Sam. Never would have had uh, all those little sacks of dust. Come on, Bert. Let me buy you a drink. Oh, Tracy, I... Oh, ain't no reason to be sore. Ain't you and me pals? Didn't we start out from home together? Sure. I just saw my chance and took it. Ain't no reason to be sore. Did I tell you about Mr. Aver? He's got a strong box. Great, big, strong box made of iron. Full of money. Well, we're gonna empty that strong box of money with what me and Sam dug. We'll buy everybody a drink. Yes, sir, with what me and Sam dug. Just reach down there, empty it right up off the ground. Great, big chunks, beautiful. Hold them up to the sun. They shine in your face. Thousands of tiny little mirrors. Not like the rest of them, man. Say, eh, Mr. Aver? <laughs> we'll see. You and Wilkins split up the dust yet? Gonna buy everybody a drink. Gonna walk up to Mr. Wilkins and say, it is now splitting up time. Gonna buy everybody a drink. Don't go away. Well, well, well. But ain't my little old partner from Missouri, Tracy Powell. Go buy everybody a drink. Need a little money. What do you say we split up the dust? Sure, kid, sure. Right now. Pretty fair wage, if you ask me, for two weeks' work. My share was half, Sam. Look, boy, take it and move on. Half the gold is mine, Mr. Wilkins. Get out of my way. Why did I leave Missouri, Bert? Why did I come over 2,000 miles? For gold? That's right. And I had it, didn't I? I had it right in my fist. Half that goes mine, Mr. Haver. You was there when we made the deal. How bad are you on? I'd be obliged to have your gun, Mr. Haver. Get yourself killed. Don't do it, Tracy. It ain't worth it. The gold ain't worth it. never killed a man before.
Care to change your dust, Mr. Powell? Yeah, I guess uh, you were too busy to see that look on Wilkins' face. <laughs> yes, sir, I, I believe you're right. I uh, think you're going to make it. This time, I'm going to let you keep all of this. Seeing as how you did so good with Wilkins. Only well, usually I get my share. <laughs> Just remember that. Take it easy, take it easy. Well, here you are. Almost $1,900. Not bad for a beginning. You should have told me Wilkins was working for you. I'm saying it now. What's the difference? Maybe you didn't hear. I want you in with us. I like you. You got nerve. Why, a man like you and a man like me, we can make a fortune. Don't be a fool, boy. Maybe it's just because I don't like you, Haver. All right, you'll wind up scratching just like the rest of them. Maybe so, but I didn't come all the way out here just to end up thieving. All right, boy. I thought you had it, but I guess you ain't. <laughs> no hard feelings. Don't worry about me, Haver. I'll get along all right. One you better feel sorry for here is Wilkins. He's going to be your partner. Wilkins was working for Haver. He wants me to go in with him. What'd you say? I guess you was right, Bert. I ain't his kind. Let's quit, Tracy. Forget about the gold. A whole new world's opening up. Other things, other ways to do besides the gold. There ain't nobody gonna get rich around here unless he wants to be like that fella Haver, or unless he wants the gold so bad he's willing to do most anything for it. Man don't need no mountain to live out his life happy. You ain't seen it up in the hills like I have, Bert. It's true, like they say. Then one day, a man can make himself enough to live like a king the rest of his life. You got a sickness, Tracy. Can't you see it? You got a sickness. And you'll either die from it or end up partners with the devil. There ain't no in-between. And you better have a drink. Because you're looking at a man that's figuring on going straight to the devil. The town grew. I got started in the dry goods business. Did pretty good, too. I didn't see much of Tracy during those years. Most of the time, he lived in the hills and only came into town once in a while whenever he needed another steak. I was glad to help him. Business was good. It was about this time that Tracy met Julie. Right from the beginning, they fell in love. I, I never could understand how a wonderful girl like Julie could wait all those years. But she did. And one summer day, he did come back. With a rock in his hand and love in his heart. from a shirt, so they ready yet? Tracy. I was worried you'd find yourself a man. I kept thinking Julie'd be gone, but you ain't. You waited. Yes, I waited. I said I wouldn't, but I waited. Oh, Tracy, I love you. This time was the hardest. 
nights never ended. I worked until I could drop. Anything to keep from thinking. I'd lie on the ground at night, came near driving me crazy, thinking about you two. I said I wouldn't wait. And then I thought, he's got to get it out of his system. And when he does, he'll come back to me. I tried to lie to myself. <laughs> oh, you should have heard the things I said to myself about you. Ever since I can remember, I've been waiting to make a home. Ohio, Kentucky, in Tennessee. I remember the day my mother and I started to put up the first set of curtains on the farm. My father came with a wagon. The stories of California. He must have been a one-year pa, from what you told me. He had ambition. I bet if he'd have lived, you and your maud had everything. I never could understand what made her stick with him. She loved him. Yes, she did. I mean to have that home, Tracy. The one my ma never had. I'd work my fingers down to the stubs for it. For a place of my own. To love a man and to bring up children in a proper way. You understand that, Tracy? You understand what I want? I'm gonna give it to you, Julie. When I'd come near to giving up, I'd, I'd think of you. I'd say to myself, it ain't just for me, it's for Julie. Everything's for Julie. And then I'd get to the next rise and I'd look up, and the climbing was that much easier. And now I've found it. And I'm gonna give you everything that a woman like you should have. All I care is your back. We're gonna get married now? Better give me that clean shirt. Man can't get married around here without a clean shirt. That's a new law they passed since they got so much civilization. <laughs> I'll get it. Oh, you better get a new one. Otherwise, the preacher will think he's marrying me to a bear. I never did see so much dirt. Congratulations, Trace. Bert. Bert. How's the old businessman? Fine, fine. By gum, you're gonna be proud of me. Anybody be proud getting a girl like Julie? Yeah, sure, but I'm talking about another Julie. This one's all rock and dirt, with the prettiest yellow streaks running through it you ever did see. I tell you, Mr. Killian, you got yourself 25% of the richest strike ever made around here within 200 miles. That's mighty generous of you, Tracy. But... Now, wait a minute. You stake me, you're gonna get your share. Will you see her? She's over at the assayers now. All written up, legal and all. The Julio, I call her. I ain't staking you this time, Tracy. Bert, you don't understand. Well, you see the rock. Come on over to the assayers with me. Like as not, she'll run 120 to the ton. All we gotta do is follow that vein. You, uh... You told Julie you're going out again? Don't be a fool, Bert. I know what I got this time. You knew last time, too. This time I won't be waiting. You'll have to choose now. Bert, you gotta stake me just this last time. If it don't work, I'll quit. I swear it. Julie, you gotta see. I, I want what you want, a home like you said. Then don't go out again. You won't quit. You got no sense. I told you that, Julie. He's got no sense. She was my girl. You knew that, too. Yeah, I knew it, and that's why I ain't staking you this time. I'm gonna prove you're not for her. You got no sense. I don't need you. I'll get me a stake somewhere else. I see how waited, you and him. Get out! Get out! It's all right, you can wait outside. Be with you in a minute, pal. This looks like a mighty promising claim, Sam. You'd uh, better look into it. Howdy, Tracy. It's been a long time. Sam here says that you registered a claim up on Dorado Ridge. Mighty promising. He says the assay's better than 120 to the ton. 
Oh, that's all right. You can talk in front of Sam. He don't bear you no grudge, do you, Sam? How'd you find out about the claim? The assayer works for me, and so does the registrar. In this business, it's necessary to know everything that's going on. Well, what can I do for you, Tracy? If there's anything I can, I will. I'm glad you saw fit to come to me. A man learns by experience, I guess. I need a stake, Haver. It's a rich claim, I know it. I ain't expecting you to stake me without getting something in return. I'll pay. Tracy, uh, you don't understand. You see, I'm running a bank now. It makes a little difference. It's not just me. There are others in San Francisco I have to account to. I can't invest the depositor's money in a claim without knowing what's in it first. How can I know what I got unless I get the equipment to find out? <laughs> just a vicious circle, ain't it? Can't get the money unless you know what you have. Can't tell what you have unless you got the money to find out. <laughs> well, it's like I said. It's a business now. Man don't stand a chance by himself unless he's uh, willing to go along. How much do you want? All of it. That's the way it works now. Man that's been up in the hills maybe wouldn't know. We put up the money, we work the claim, and we give what we think it's worth for finding it. Every day somebody comes in here with a rock. Isn't that so, Sam? We can't get enough machinery to work what we've already got. It's a business now, Tracy, just like I said. Oh. Sam here took the trouble to file all around you. You won't get water or nothing unless you come in with us Claim ain't worth a cent. We've been taking extra special trouble to watch you, Tracy. Isn't that true, Sam? Just for old times' sake. I'm letting you clear out this time, Tracy. Won't well, nobody touch you, I'll see to that. Funny thing about you, Tracy, you're, you're different. <laughs> you're different than Sam here or me. Trouble is, you want that gold so much, you're gonna come crawling. And I'll be here when you do. I thought Tracy would, but he tried to build a home, to earn a living, just like everybody else. It wasn't easy. 
because Tracy was a man who wanted to be a king. It's only the hills. Oh, we're doing all right, Tracy. Crop will be in soon. Harvest. Year or two, we'll get some cows. Build a house. Oh, you see, it won't be long. In no time, we'll have a ranch like other folks. Like other folks. I look at you working out there, and I think of my ma. She hadn't hardly given birth to me, and she was out there working again, bending her back, scratching the earth. I'm not afraid to work if it's for a reason. If we just had $2,000, we'd get started right. If we'd buy ourselves some livestock, we'd have a chance. You've got to stop dreaming, Tracy. Look how long you looked and you didn't find it. Most never do. But they live and work and have a family and love each other. That's what's important. I ain't changing my mind, Julie. It's just that, well, it just seems crazy breaking our backs this way. I can't help it. I've seen some of the stupidest, biggest stumble bums come roaring in from a strike. They could dig enough gold in one week to buy us the biggest ranch in these parts. Don't worry, I ain't going out again. But I gotta tell you how I feel. I'm trying, Julie. You know I am. It's just that it don't seem right, sitting here with all that gold running through them hills. A drink with the hardest fighting. Hardest drinking, dirt scratching as many really president meets and first we cross the Sacramento. <laughs> Come on now, Tracy, tell me. How long has it been, boy, since you and me first arrived in these accursed hills in search of the rainbow, eh? Tell me now, even, even it does make me feel me age. Ten years, nine, ten years. <laughs> Do you remember the time I had 25% of the black hole of Calcutta? <laughs> and come in and took myself a bath in a whole bucket full of whiskey. And then it turned out that some dirty swine sorted the mine just to make away with those little scratchings. <laughs> and there was I, with a whole bucket full of bourbon and salsa, <laughs> as thirsty as Finnegan's goat. <laughs> Tracy, I want you for my partner. I do that, boy. You'll make the finest partner of man that ever wants. So come on, on with me now. Come on, on in now. Look, I've got the eye of an eagle and the nose of a nand eater. And I can spot a mother load of season than 20 miles. I'd be proud to have you for my partner. Proud to be associated with her. And on that, We'd have another, 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 another snake venom. What do you say now? Come on. Oh, here, here you go. Let me see it. Oh, eh? Let me see it. Sure, I got it right there. Sure, sure, here. Here. Man, you look at it four or five times already. How much is it worth? A hundred and fifteenth of the ton, so help me. And you didn't register it? Nobody around here knows where it is? Sure, not sure, not sure. Not sure. Ah, well, they wouldn't let you keep it. It's a business now. Goals of business. We do the sweating, Haber does the getting. Yeah, I know. Not from Jim or McCann, they would. Tracy, I've got big connections here. Up in San Francisco. In the San Francisco Mining Company. Sure, Haber never get his hands on this outfit. <laughs> How odd we had to do, Trace, is find the vein. And that, if there's anyone in the world can do that any better than Tracy Powell, I'd like to know who it is. <coughs> Except for maybe myself. And we're partners, share and share alike. That's right, Tracy, lad, sure, little boy. So there's nothing less matters except the gold. You don't think I'd spend my whole life, do you, to wind up with nothing? <laughs> Not at all, Jimbo. I'm going to ride down this main street in a golden carriage and stick out my tongue at the room when I see and say, this is me, Jim O'McCann. I come for it, and now I've got it. And you can all jump when I talk. 
Because this ain't no little man talking. This is a big, big man who done it himself because he had the guts. Jim, I want today, Tracy. He wants you to go off with him. He got himself a grub steak. I said no. I'm going to have a baby, Tracy. There's no marriage without children. Just like I said, it never would be. Uh, when I was your age, I'd had the nerve to face her, face to face, and say, Darling, I'm a man that's foot loose and fancy free, and I'm on the room. But I'll be back someday with a pocket full of boodle and make it up to you. I want to ask you a question. What am I? Am I something or am I nothing? You're nothing. Absolutely nothing. Tracy boy, what you've got to face is women don't understand about these things. You're right. She doesn't understand. A woman doesn't understand. I gotta make it. I got to. Tracy meant to come back soon, even before the baby was born, but he didn't. The weeks became months, and the months, years. Years of climbing, digging, and scratching. By 1869, most everybody forgot the gold. Civilization came west. Our town grew bigger. Most of us did the ordinary things, working, farming, building a business. There were still a few like Tracy and Jimmo who never forgot the dream. Well, Trace, what do you think? I think we dig here. Now, look, let's try and be logical. We know that somewhere in this enormous beehive, there's a beautiful vein of golden honey. Now, the question is, does the vein come out here? Or in the next hill over there. Or maybe there's no vein at all. But, wait, Trace, look, I, I, I'll never let it cross my mind again. I say we dig here. I agree with you. We'll dig here. So in that case, we'll have to give it the final acid test. To make sure, we're going to toss a coin. <laughs> this here is the last honest dollar I ever made. And I save it for just such an occasion as this. Will it be, Trace, entertained? I don't care about no coin. I say we dig here. Oh, look, Trace, a man can only do so much for himself, boy. I said the biggest strike was stuck in Tinnepah. When a fellow woke up so drunk one morning, he put his pants on backwards and didn't know which way he was walking. Will it be, Trace, entertained? Oh, heads. Well, heads it is. Yeah. yeah, now that we got science to back us up, let's get to work. Now what do you think you're doing? Well, it's been so long since me and the Lord had anything to say to each other, I thought now would be a good time to get acquainted again. We're going to be needing them. Yeah, well, there'll be plenty of time for that on Sunday. We got a tunnel to dig. Here, let's go. Make a line, make a mall, kill a honey, blood relation, tell a hurry more. 
Megalani from old Kalahani, picking freighties the fold the door. I never have a eye get wet. Drop it. Drop it! Roar in the arms. Well, if there ain't the worst two-faced weasel known to man. What are you doing here, Sam Wilkins, eh? Oh, no, no. Don't think you're gonna scare me with that pea shooter you got there. At this close range, one squirt of tobacco juice and I'll burn you for life. Get out of my way. I mean business, Jimmo. I'm taking over this claim. Oh, Sammy, don't make me laugh. Oh, now, so you're claim jumping again, eh? My, my, but happened to mighty fallen, though. <laughs> Whatever became of that more than sweet-smelling job you have with that skunk Abel? Him and me split up. Eh? Come on now, old man. Get your stuff together and get on out of these parts. Bye! <laughs> Tracy. I should have known. Honest, Tracy, if I'd known this was your claim, I, I wouldn't have tried nothing. I guess my luck has just plumb run out. Well, I'll just be going along now. What's this about you not working for Haber no more? Well, he threw me out. He's a big man now. He don't need the likes of me no more. So I just busted loose for the hills. Nothing else I could do. Things sure have changed a lot, Tracy. All the claims I spoke for, or mined, or ain't worth nothing. Say, Trace, let me work for you. We don't need nobody. Trace, I think we'd better take it, man. It's better than having him running down to the town shooting his mouth off about what we're doing up here. They'll be swarming all over the place. How do we know you ain't gonna go run into Haver before we can file? I'd die first, Trace. Honest, I would. You know what he had me doing? He's got a big house now, see? He had me fixing things that was broke. And painting. I'd die before I'd run to him. All right, Wilkins. If I catch you turning against us this time, I'll kill you. Thanks, Trace. And I ain't doing this for you, Wilkins. My heart just naturally goes out to anybody who can't stand Haver. I guess we could use a man. <laughs> now get to work, Slade. Go on.
did we hit a trace? Did we hit a good boy? Look at it, Jim. Oh, look at it. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, ah, ah. ah, look at that, lads. Would you look at... Ah. Oh, sure, it must be 10 minutes. Oh, it's 20 million. Boys, it's a, it's a, it's a billion. A trillion, a quadrillion, a dillion. A quadrillion, a stillion, dillion, quadrillion. Oh, blue blazes. Holy blue blazes. I've got to see it with my own eyes. I've got to go in and see it. I'm going. I'm going in and see it. Has anybody got any I'll go. I'll be there for life. We'll like it. A ding, dang, ding. Ding, dang, trillion, trillion. Everything's gonna be fine, old timer. Yeah. Me and Wilkins will carry you down to the mules and then you can ride in. Yeah. We're gonna fix you up, all right. Hey, tell it to what, what was it like, eh? I didn't get a chance to see it. What was it like? Real rich, Jimmo. Real rich. <laughs> tell me, Tracy. He's right. Huh? He's right. Must have been 150 to the ton. I seen her shining right through. Just like you said, a mountain of gold. I, I can't feel my legs. Have I any legs, Tracy? You don't have to worry about nothing. You're gonna be walking better than me, like you always done. Won't have to walk now. Eh? I've got to be a mountain. And... Could have set away up on top of it the rest of my whole life. And ride around in a golden carriage. Stick out in your tongue. Jimmo, Jimmo, fight. You got everything ahead of you. Anything you want to do. Ride around the world. You can sleep in the bed. So soft, just like you said. It's hard to talk, Trace. Tell me, what's it gonna be like when you get home? Well, it's gonna be Julie and the kid, like I told you, Jimmo. And we're gonna walk in there with our arms full of money, and I'm gonna spread mine out in front of Julie. And we're gonna buy the biggest house in San Francisco, and you're gonna live with us and eat with us. And you're gonna sit at the head of the table, and you're gonna smoke big cigars, the biggest this side of Sacramento River. Shame this had to happen to the old man. Must have spent there his whole life looking. I guess Jim was kind of lucky. There's them that looks all their life and never makes it. Yeah. I guess you could say Jim was really lucky. Jimmo, she's called. And we've got enough gold in her to buy all the whiskey this side of the Rockies for the rest of our lives. It ain't every day a man gets a chance to drink himself into a purple horn toad, and he don't have to pay an ounce of dust for it, neither. Because me, Sam Wilkins, part owner of the dog gone to strike that ever hit these parts, is buying. So every man, Jackie, you get up to the bar there and start guzzling. <laughs> well, come on, what's the matter there, Aggie? Start pouring. I got a thirst I've been saving since before my ma weaned me. Just had to come here. Seems like I always do when I first get to town. I understand. 
Folks sure are going crazy. And I'll bet you can't find a mule within 50 miles of here. And every day you find a gold strike as promising as the Jimmo. Mighty glad that you decided to come to us before negotiating with anybody else. Well, Jimmo trusted you, so I trust you. How about a drink? Here's to the first day's digging. May she go on and on. Here's to Jimmo. And now we have here the final papers. All properly drawn. And the initial 5,000 in cash as you requested. You will understand we're making an exception in this case. We don't usually advance anything until the extent of the claim can be verified. Mr. Powell, you understand that we don't know as yet precisely how much gold there is in the Jimmo. So the sale of the stock is purely speculative at the moment. However, we do believe... I'll be right back. She won't see you. Did you tell her what I told you? That I hit it big, that I come back like I said I would. The fact that you hit it big is all over town. Look, Tracy, you can't do what you did to a woman and expect her to take you back. Least of all, Julie. Why, she's raised that kid, done laundering. She says she doesn't want to see you. She's got to see me. I've got to make it up to her. I'll bring her the money. I'll show it to her. When she sees it, she'll believe it. It'll all be hers. Still the money. Won't be a minute. Here you are, Mrs. Ralston. Call again. For you, like I said. I told Bert I didn't want to see you. That's what he said. And get out. All right. But how come you didn't take up with no other man? Go on, tell me. After all this time, if you wasn't waiting for me. I waited for you to change. To come back in out of the hills, to come to your senses. I thought every day, any day, you'd come back. But I am back, just like you said. Yes, you're back. But nothing's changed. I don't want the money! Don't you understand? I don't want it. I never wanted it. I wanted a husband who would love me and respect me and be a father to my children, not the money. Do you think that makes up for the years? For the boy who never had a father? Will you buy them back? Hey, Ma, you got no idea what's going on. There's more people than I ever seen before. Wow, we look at the money. Yours, mister? Here, let me help you. Hundred dollar bills. Must be fifty hundred of them. Billy. This is your father. You come back. You come back. I told Ma she shouldn't worry. I told her someday you'll be back. Everybody said you would. Will you stay now? Will you, Pa? I know, son. It ain't up to me. <laughs> hey, that was real good, Billy. I expect you and me is gonna have some real good hunting together. First rifle I ever owned. Sure is a beauty. Reminds me of the time old Jimmo and me was stalked by a wildcat. Did I ever tell you about Jimmo? He was the one you named the strike for, but not about the wildcat. What about it? Did you kill it or did Jimmo? Well, it was like this. It was about, oh, nine years ago. Jimmo and me had this same hunch about it. Julie let Tracy come and visit the boy. She couldn't make up her mind whether to 
take him back or not. She needed time. Like I said, Bert, if a man's got faith in himself and is willing to stick it out... I've done all right, Tracy. Business is Sure, good. sure, sure. But uh, if you could have been there when me and Wilkins first reached out and touched it with our hands... Well, sir, I tell you, it was worth everything I've been through from the time you and me left home together. And do you know how much she assayed? No. 150 to the ton. How do you like that? 150 to the ton. <laughs> What's the matter? The gym off. She... Baxter told me to tell you. What's the matter? What happened? We ain't got nothing. The vein come up short. The man quit digging. The gold run out. You're crazy. I ain't crazy. We got nothing. Who said? Who said? Syndicate. They told me to tell you there's nothing there. The men are coming back in. And we ain't got nothing. They're lying. We seen the gold. Sam, you and I seen the gold. I've seen it, you hear? I've seen it. I've seen it. You can't go down. Those days are gone. Wilkins says there ain't no gold in the gym. What do you mean by Paul? I want them papers back I signed. The deal's off. It's all right, Baxter. Give it to him. It's all right, Baxter. Give him the paper. It's been a long time, pal. Oh, you can put away the gun. No one's going to cheat you. Why, you dirty Don't blame liar. Baxter. He was only carrying out orders. Now, if you have come to me, I could have told you there are no mining operations in this area that I don't control. That's a lie. Another one of your dirty tricks. Tell him. It's the truth, pal. We worked the claim, and the vein come up short. I'll take you up there. I'll show it to you. That must be the vein. There's gold there. I know it. <laughs> sure, there's gold there. Just like you said, the biggest strike since Tunnabaugh. The main vein was in the next hill. We went on and found it after you was run out. You're lying. You're trying to take my gold away from me. I dug that gold, me and Jimmo. We broke our backs digging. Now, ain't nobody going to take my gold, Haver. I'll kill you first. <laughs> Shall we go on to the next hill? I says, no, I like it fine right here. Do you hear me, Bert? We was that close, you understand? Standing right Stop there. The next hill, we'd have Stop everything. It. One more stinking hill. Tracy, listen to me. It's nothing to be ashamed of for a man to fail. Nothing to be ashamed of, I tell you. Jim was right. If you've got the guts, you can make it. Guts? You call that guts? Tell you what you really are. A coward. You hear? A coward. Afraid to live and struggle like a normal human being to build a life. But no, you've got to hit it big. To have enough gold to choke yourself with. And choke me! Oh, Tracy. Tracy, come home. It's not too late. Come home. Come home. What do you think I want to do? I do want to come home, but with what? Empty hands with nothing? Nothing? Abraham, hey, me! I'm gonna make it! I don't quit! I'm gonna make it! Tell the kid, tell the kid, this is just a temporary setback, just temporary. I'll be back soon. Tell the kid. Jesse! Let him go, Julie. Let him go. He's no good. Not even for himself. Nothing will help him no more. Nothing. So the years passed and it became the winter of Tracy's life. I guess maybe you can't blame a man for trying. Some don't know when to quit. Others of us maybe give up too soon. Ain't nothing wrong with you except maybe a little cold. Maybe some of this makes you feel good. Can't be a losing you. 
You're just about the best mule I ever had. You ought to be proud of that name I give you. He was the one, that Jimmo. He said I could smell gold so good that I could find a dentist with my eyes shut. <laughs> you just get yourself a little rest there now, boy. And I want you to try some of this. Here. Here. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Easy does it, boy. Ain't nothing to be ashamed of being sick. No, it happens near everybody. Sure. I bet you feel better already, huh? Yeah, well, I'll get you some more over here. Good boy, Jimmo. Good boy. Don't quit. Stand up. Don't give up. Come on, Jimmo. You can do her, boy. You can do her. We'll go back to the cave. We'll stay nice and warm. We'll build a fire. We'll stay there till the snow's gone. You can do her, boy. You can do her. Come on. You, you got to. I need you. alone, Timmy. I'm awfully sorry. The boy doesn't understand. That's all right, ma'am. I am a little dirty. I've been up in the hills, staking a claim. Oh, you see that, Timmy? This old gent's a prospector, looking for silver. Gold, ma'am. Oh, Betty's rich, huh, Ma? You rich, mister? My pa says there's lots of gold around here, as much as a million, even. You got a million, mister? I'm awfully sorry. That's all right, ma'am. Boy, it didn't mean nothing. Can I help you, sir? Oh, uh, I was looking for Bert. Uh, uh, Mr. Killian, uh, he's an old friend of mine, said he. Oh, Mr. Killian's over at the hotel, the new one. There's a city father's lunch there this afternoon. Oh, uh, well, uh... It's just over a couple of streets. You can't miss it. It's brand new. Thank you, ma'am. Staying in this time. Listen to me. How about a drink? Come on. I'll bet you haven't had a drink since the last time you were here. Some whiskey, Charlie. Well, it's sure nice to have you back, Tracy. Can't tell you how nice. idea how good. You, uh, you ain't fixing to go back up in those hills right away, are you, Tracy? Oh, what a question. What do you think I'm fixing to do? I'm gonna let you in on it this time, Bert, just for old time's sake. I shouldn't be telling you this, but uh, as long as you're gonna be in on it, you might as well know. You know how I always was talking about uh, Squaw Ridge? Well, I've been over from stem to stern. You know how I always had a, a nose for a vein of gold? Well, sir, this is hotter than the gym -o. Yes, sir. Real promise. 
it. It ain't like you as an old man, Tracy. You're, you're still young enough to do most anything. A few months sitting around and you... You'll die, you'll go back up in those hills. And it ain't right. It's like killing yourself before your time. Well, get me a steak somewhere else. Now, don't go blowing off your head. Did you ever think to go see Julie or the boy? You don't want no part of me. How do you know if you ain't seen him? It's a long time, Tracy. Things happen. People change. Look at me. I ain't mad at you. I know you did what you had to do, and that's all. I'll tell you what. I'll go fetch the boy. He's got himself a cleaning business, doing fine. He'll be real proud of him, and we'll just see if he don't want nothing to do with his paw. We'll just see. Howdy, son. We want you to come home, Pa. I expect Bert's told you about this strike I'm real close to. Well, I gotta get on up to it before the thaw sets in. Man's gotta be first to a claim if he's gonna do himself any good. I know, but maybe you could hold off just long enough to visit with us and then you could be going on in the spring. Well, I, I don't know how kindly your ma would look to me coming. Come on. So Tracy came the long way home. Took a lot of courage to do what he did. Julie was waiting as always. Because, well, she loved him. I guess Tracy finally realized that a love like Julie's meant more than the gold.